Hi, this is Ivan. Today I want to do a brief tutorial on how to hook up external touch panels so that they can be used with Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as X-Plane. This is a question I frequently receive uh, from my videos or on my videos uh, and I thought I would go through just a real quick how to hook them up and how to set them up within Windows. I am running Windows 11 on my machine here. However, it is, it is a very similar uh, setup on Windows 10. So the first thing I want to do is kind of show you the touch panel and the hookups. So this is basically a generic touch panel. I, the, the company is, it's either WeMax it or WiMax it. I'm not sure how to say it. Um, this is a 15.6 uh, screen size. The two monitors that you see here are 13.3. Uh, I like the smaller, it helps me see over. But these are, they're basically the same setup. Uh, and I just want to kind of show you some of the inputs. So the first thing, you're basically going to need uh, two cables, two connections to, to make this work. The first is going to be the HDMI cable that's going to come from your video card. So my video card has multiple outputs, as I'm sure most of yours does as well. And that's just going to be a plain HDMI cable from your graphics card to your panel. And I don't know if you can see this here. I'll try to get it to where you can see it. This is the HDMI input from the graphics card. Now, some of these uh, monitors, touchscreen panels rather, will have the smaller HDMI. Uh, for example, both of these don't use full size. Actually, that's not true. They do use full size. Um, HDMI, but I've had another touch panel that I had to use an adapter to get it to work, or you can use a special cable. Then you'll also note there are multiple USB connections here. And basically, these are going to be for, depending on the model, these may be for additional inputs um, and for power. Now, the way this one works and the way these two work, the video signal comes into the HDMI and then power comes into one of the USB connections and on the same connection that is going to send out the touch information to the computer. Now I have mine going through a powered USB hub. I don't know if the computer by itself would be enough to power this. I haven't tried that. Um, so I go through a powered USB hub. So that sends the power to the monitor, to these monitors, but also sends the touch signal back to the computer. So that is the physical connection on how to do that. And I get a lot of questions about, you know, it's not working or it doesn't seem to be working. And there's a little bit of a setup involved and we'll go through that briefly. So one thing I'm going to get you to look at, this monitor on the left I have reset it is no longer calibrated or not rather calibrated it is no longer set up as a touch panel this one is and the one way you can kind of tell for sure is if I rub my finger like that I get the selection square if I do that over here it doesn't show up on this panel it shows up on that panel let me see if that comes through here um, let me bring this back up. I don't know if you can see here when I see what happens. I'm, I'm touching this left panel, but it's showing up on the, on the main screen. So if it's not set up, what it actually does is it just basically turns this monitor into a big touchpad, into a mouse pad. So I can treat this as if it's like a remote touchscreen for the main screen. This one's set up. This one is not, but I'm going to set this one up and let me show you how this works. So let me switch this over and we'll give this a shot. The screen will turn bright white and sometimes the print doesn't show through, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. So now I'm sharing my desktop. So again, for Windows 11, the procedure is pretty much identical for Windows 10. You're going to go to your control panel. I don't know how to get there from the Windows setting that you get from the start button here. I go straight to the control panel and 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Tablet PC Settings. And I'm going to open that up and it opens this window up. Now, what you're going to, you're not going to calibrate. I have yet to have to calibrate these. These seem to work. But what you do have to do is hit Setup. Now, when I hit this button, I'll go to this view here. When I hit this button that says Setup, and you can't really see it from this view, let me, when I hit this right here, all three of these screens are going to go bright white. So let me set, let me hit Setup. And now all of the screens are bright white. Now what you may not be able to see because it's the, the screen is so bright that the camera is not going to be able to pick it up. The big screen on the top says, tap this screen with a single finger to identify it as the touch screen. If this is not the tablet PC screen, press enter to move to the next screen. To close the tool, press escape. So my main screen is not a touch screen, so I'm going to hit enter. And then it's going to go to the next screen, and I'm going to tap that. And then I'm going to press enter again, and it's going to show up. Tap this screen with the single finger to identify as the touch screen. And all you're doing is you're hitting it, and now we'll go back to here. And you can see that just as before, that does a selection screen, and this does a selection screen. It is no longer acting as a mouse pad for the main screen. So this screen is now set up as a touch screen for Windows 11 on this machine. And this is what you have to do before you even open up your flight simulator, whether it's Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane 11, soon to be 12. Um, and that should work. You should be able to pop your screens out, drag them to either one of the screens. If it's a G1000 setup, you should be able to press the buttons. You should be able to use your Knobster if you have one of those. But otherwise, it should work. So again, start with this. It's fairly simple. The two main connections, one more time, is the HDMI cable coming in. And then depending on your model, you're going to utilize one of those USB inputs I recommend to a powered hub that is connected to your computer. So it's getting power from the from the hub, but it's also sending that touch screen, that touch panel information back to the computer. So hopefully this has been helpful. If not, drop some questions um, in the comments below and I'll do what I can to help you out. You guys have a great day.